Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage The Vault Series. Today's clip was filmed back in 2004 at my West End guitar store, Chambers Guitars. It was one of the very, very, very first interviews, and it really, this is the least of a true interview, I think, of anything we've shown. Naro and I, Naro Wilson was our guest, and Naro is one of the top songwriter producers in Nashville history and we were very good friends and that's what it is really it's a conversation between two friends if you've watched most of my interviews I make it a habit not to try to interrupt anybody talking uh, and in this case since we were were pals and just sitting around talking it, it was it was more like we were sitting at a bar or something just talking about songwriting a lot of people have asked, you know, they knew that I had had some success in songwriting over the years, and um, they asked a lot of questions about it. And this, I thought, might be kind of fun for, for those of you who who do have questions about songwriting, at least the way it was at the time this was filmed back in 2004. And Naro produced... Um, Kenny Chesney, he, he produced uh, the first records on Shania Twain. Uh, he wrote one of the, or co-wrote, one of the biggest songs to ever come out of Nashville for Charlie Rich called The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. We talk about how he, how that song was written. For me personally, he co-wrote two of my all-time favorite country songs. Three, actually, we talk about. One of them was called A Picture of Me Without You by George Jones. All of these are like watching a movie when you listen to them. And another one was called The Door. And that was a song that really took me from being a pop rock guitar player to understanding what real country music was about, was The, the Door by George Jones, written by, by Naro and Billy Sherrill. And like Naro says, he Stopped Loving Her Today is, is probably the greatest country song of all time, but to me, bumping right up next to it is a song called The Grand Tour, and it was by, or recorded by George Jones, produced by Billy Sherrill, uh, and it was George Ritchie and, and Carmel Taylor were the writers on it, and uh, I, whenever I tried to uh, be inspired, that was the song, the record that I would put on and listen to to try to try to get a little bit of that mojo in my head when I was was writing. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Once again, the great songwriter and producer, Nora Wilson. I don't believe you can hardly do this deal of music unless you hang out. Yeah. Uh, you got to hang out because Billy let you. Yeah. You got to hang out because the other people involved let you. I got to hang out because Chet let me. I got to hang out because Owen Bradley let me. And it's how you get introduced and acquainted with that, that feeling that takes place in the studio because we were witnesses. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, Roger Miller and I sold Bibles in East Nashville for about three days. <laughs> and somebody asked Roger why we quit selling Bibles. And he said, the Lord called us out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Were you like a lot of the guys that listen to the Grand Ole Opry every Saturday? Never did. Never? Um, there's so much about my, my musical life that has been an evolving that I went from there. I, I think God blessed me with some talent of some sort, you know? And uh, certainly here, and I, and I love beautiful music, and I don't like nothing stuff, you know? I'm, I'm always wanting to get some bumps on my mm -hmm. arm. And when that gave me bumps on my arm, it, it made me feel like that had a, an opportunity to work. But when did you start writing the lyrics? So I got a job with Screen Gems as a song plugger. Mm -hmm. And we had, well, over in the 812 building, we had two little rooms, a little bitty baby front room and the back room, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I got in there, I was excited to this. You'd have thought I was in New York on mm -hmm. the top of a penthouse. And, you know, fixed that little office up and I started hitting the streets plugging Screen Gems Columbia songs. Mm -hmm. And so politics went kind of bad. I don't think, I, I know I didn't do anything wrong, but I got popped there pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing is, is, is that stings, uh, don't it? Yeah, it's happenstance <laughs> uh, 
I just met the, the most wonderful guy in my life was Al Gallico. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so Al had heard about me. And he said, kid, you know, I hear you're a good guy, you know. And uh, I said, well, you know, Al, I, you know, I try to be. He said, I'm going to give you a job, you know. And, you know, I've thought about it a million times, and maybe he'll see this before he leaves here. But I almost wish many times that had never changed, that, that I'd never left the Al Gallico situation because he, he got me started producing. He believed that I could do it. He gave me the chance. He started me with Joe Stampley. That was my first absolute success as a producer, mm -hmm. doing Joe Stampley. And, uh, and, and man, I, you might not think it, but we were together eight years making records, Joe and I. Oh, were. really? I yes, sir. Mm -hmm. you, um, you got the job as a song plugger. Or, for Al. And, right. For Al. And so what, when did you get to writing? Well, just during that first year or something, uh, uh, Alex Harvey and I, uh, got piled up together a little bit, and we got to hanging out in the office. And, and Alex so, Harvey. Alex Harvey. He and I wrote "Baby, Baby, I Know You're a Lady" by David Houston. Hear me calling, baby. You remember that song? Did Billy cut that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that that was 1968, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was my very first, and we wrote that together. Um, and then it just kind of went. From that to this to that, and next thing you know, I'm writing. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, and it, and of course it's it's been a team effort. I mean, I'm not I, the only song I've written in my life that I was proud of was July the twelfth, nineteen thirty nine, and I wrote that all by myself. But I mean, nothing's been more boring in my life than to have to write by myself. I I envy those that can, but. But I like writing team-wise and camaraderie of it all. And I can tell you right now, I've, I've, I've taken, just to be brutally honest, I've been on some songs that I didn't really have much to say about. I just happened to be there and we were a team and we got something going. And you know, and I know days when I think I probably showed more- Everybody carries you know, more a load. clout than, yeah, everybody does carry load when you when you write as a team like Because that. once you're on, if you're yeah, on, yeah. a great yeah. co-writer, yeah. Will is enhance a great, everything. Well, yeah. is a is a sounding board, and will not try to write a line just so they can say they wrote a line. If you're writing great lines, they'll say. That's what keep make, on. That's what makes it work. Yeah, you're right. Sounding board bounces off here to over here, mm -hmm. and this guy said, "Oh, you said that, but what if mm -hmm. you say that instead of th that at that?" And I, I and a great writer, a co-writer yeah. will have enough. Uh, well, well, when you when you do subconsciously or whatever spout out a great line, right? They'll go, and you'll go. I don't know. And they'll go, no, no, that's great. Yeah, it's great. That's great. That's right. I I do believe that's that makes that fun. Mm -hmm. That makes that work. And you got the thing about co-writing. You got somebody to share the same. You're giving up half the song, yeah, right. but that's you got okay. somebody you can call up. I and never talk ever about. thought about that. You know. I know. I, well, I, know I promise you, I never thought about that. Giving up. I didn't think. I just never thought about that. We just did it. When you know, when I came up here, I didn't really know country music. I, I never listened to it except what crossed over. And um, but I was blessed to have, through association, to have, to have gotten to to meet Billy. And Billy showed pity or whatever on me, or maybe he thought he saw something there. I he know. did. I know he did. I'm a and, witness. You know. And, um, yes, I did. never did know. What I did no, no. He liked your <laughs> ideas. He did. He always. I know Billy Sherrill for sure, as well as anyone. Well, and nah, he 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 liked what he heard. And well, I don't know. I always thought it was because I didn't know who he was, and I didn't throw up when I met him, you know. And 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 I, but I threw up later as I got to know who he was, and then I said, "Good God, what's he doing with me?" Yeah, right. I don't know. When I right. he's not showing very good judgment. I don't know if I want to hang out with him anymore. He could if show he, the best judgment. He's the he, man to hang around. Well, you know, if he wanted to hang out with me, he needed to <laughs> think about it. But so anyway, I'm riding down the road, and. And I'm listening to country radio, and, and you know, you're talking about from, to, this is somebody who listened. Only country I heard was crossover. So everything to me, it's like I got dropped off in another planet, and I had to relearn everything. I didn't know what was new, what was old, you know, anything about anything in country music other than crossover. And I'm riding down the road one day, and I hear the door. And I, and I remember exactly where I was at. I was on 65 going up the exit ramp on, on Old Hickory Boulevard. 
and the door is on. And, and, that, and all of a sudden, I got it. That was when I got what country music was all about. And, and that song, and I'm bringing it up because you wrote that song. I was a writer on that song, yeah. You and Billy, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. And Carmel, I believe, Carmel? was on this, yeah. And, I mean, but you could smell that song. You could smell the, the, the shells exploding and, the, and, you know, and you could hear the, the door. Burst. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was just, it was so, it was a movie. And well, it, it was kind of, we used to laugh a little bit about a portion of that, which was with the slamming of the door. I got the door. You've got I, that actual door. I've got that door. Well, we got a big kick out of the fact that we slammed the door and recorded it. And, yeah, and, which was what else would you do for guys? Yeah, you know. and yeah, and I mean you can you can almost see a skirt flipping in the wind, going out the door mm -hmm. is the last little glimpse you see of this person leaving yeah. the room. You know, and um, and and then the next thing in the, in the song that I used for inspiration. Every single time I wanted to really dig in and write what I thought was a great song was the Grand Tour. And that song today still, I just, I don't know. I don't know if there's, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, what they think is the greatest song. Well, it's a good one. I don't, um, I don't say it's the greatest one. I think He Stopped Loving Her Today may be the well, that's finest what, that typifies the sadness. You know, country music as we're talking about now mm -hmm. and back then mm -hmm. and not now. Uh, all that music had a lot to do with being sad. Mm -hmm. People used to talk about hearing, listening to the music made you cry in your beer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the new novel world that wants to hear light-hearted, wordy, cutie, cutesy little stuff. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I mean, I, I can't stand around and say it's wrong when they're mm -hmm. when they're selling millions. Right. But but uh, that that feely music, you know, was uh, very strong. I mean, you could. You could get sad in the New York second, but you know it would it would make you want to get you drink and sit mm -hmm. down and cry mm -hmm. in your beer. I right. mean, you know, so so I yeah I'm afraid I miss a, a bunch of that stuff. I do. I know one of my biggest thrills in my life was going to the Opry uh, when George first sang it on the Grand Ole Opry. The door, and, or the, or the tour. No, the Grand Tour. Yeah. And 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 I mean. Now, that, see, I'm getting that was, just I'm telling about you, it. that was a happening. That was absolutely happening. And everybody in there recognized that we were on to something pretty, de pretty right. decent. Right. You know, you could just feel it in, right. the, in the audience and especially the players and everybody around. They said, oh, man. Yeah. You know. um, that was George Ritchie's thought. Really? The Grand Tour, he came, oh, yeah, man, that, that definitely was. Um, yeah. Um, well, and then another uh, a pitch a picture of me. Picture without me you. without you. Well, that's another mid Wilson Ritchie routine, Man. you know that. But you know, I just I have to say some of those were wonderful gifts in a way. I mean, they just fell out of there. I mean, I think I think you can, and you know this. You've written plenty to know that once you have a good title, that opens itself up for easy discussion and thought process. Mm -hmm. It just nearly will write itself. It'll just fall, it just falls into place so, so wonderfully. Well, the most beautiful girl in the world. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's just, that's a major, major gift. And when I wrote on that song, we worked on that song, uh, I wasn't a writer. I, I wouldn't classify myself as a, a writer at that point at all, not at all. How did that happen? Well, I at that time was still trying to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And I was recording for Mercury Records. And Rory Burke was in Chicago. National sales and promotion head. With a thirst for writing like no one I ever knew. And I guess till this day. And anything I'd have to say here is, I mean, it, everybody knows about Rory Burke and what he's done with his life and as a writer. So I stay, I'm staying in their little apartment. His lovely wife is named Rita. They had an old cat named Mrs. Wilson. And I woke up in the morning uh, after, and th th we'd take a little drink back mm -hmm. in those days, mm -hmm. when, you know, this pretty young. And, 
and the, even Rory might have had one or two that night. I won't, I won't put the words in his mouth. I'll just speak for myself. But I woke up rather hungover. I, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling awful good, you know. And then I, I heard a little peck at this little door and in this little bedroom, and there was Miss Wilson sleeping between my feet. And in pops Rory with a big grin on his face and a gut string guitar and a cup of coffee and Rita's wife had the thing of orange juice. And Rory said, let's write a song. Well, what, I, what am I going to do after waking up in a feeling buzzed and terrible and I'm in the guy's, I'm a guest at his house and he's trying to make me a star on on the record label, what am I going to do, say no, mm -hmm. you know? So I said, well, okay, and so I, <laughs> well, I, I get up, you know, and uh, and we sit there, and that, that was a start. He said, I got a verse, you know, uh, of something, you know, that I want you to hear, and uh, so he just strapped that verse on me, and, and it went from there. and and. And then we wrote that song pretty much as is. He didn't have the title, or he, or he had the title already. Uh, well, it it didn't get there till we started writing it, and, and you know how that process mm -hmm. works, yeah. you know. And uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the funny part was that we we came. I'm trying to remember. We came back home and had written the song, and. Nobody maybe knows it, but I recorded the song with Rory Burke. I, I mean, thought, excuse me, excuse me, excuse, 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 excuse. I wrote the song. I, I, I recorded the song. I'll get this right shortly. I produced the, the record on Joe Stampley, and Joe refused. I mean, he, he, he says it now, and we laugh about it, but he just was irate about, no, we, I don't put that record out at all, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, no chance of that because I want to be a country artist. Mm -hmm. So, and hey, you know, that's kind of a pop thing, you know, mm -hmm. and that's where my ears musically went, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, and then later, Billy Sherrill truly gave it the definitive process by just saying, hey, just that key thing, hey, did you have? I mean, I think that that that's that's so important. Somebody can come along and do just a simple, simple thing, mm -hmm. and makes it more definitive than mm -hmm. ever. So that's actually how we all three were involved in the song. Mm 